Hey football fans, welcome back to Soccer News Center. Today, we're diving into the intriguing topic of buyback clauses in football transfers. You may have heard about Tottenham Hotspur chairman Daniel Levy's recent comments about a potential buyback clause for Harry Kane. But are these clauses really as significant as they seem? Levy's response during a fans forum left many wondering if he was serious or joking when he mentioned a buyback clause for Kane. In a subsequent interview, he clarified that if Kane ever wanted to return to the Premier League and join Tottenham, the club would have the ability to purchase him. However, the details are still unclear, and it seems more like a first option arrangement rather than a specific agreement with a pre agreed price. But here's the thing in most cases, buyback clauses are more theoretical than practical. They serve as a way to appease fans who are upset about the departure of a beloved player, rather than guaranteeing a reunion in the future. Sure, buyback clauses are becoming more common, especially in deals involving younger players. They can provide certain benefits, such as allowing the selling club to bank a transfer fee while retaining the option to bring the player back if circumstances change. The buying club also has a vested interest in the player's success. Spanish clubs like Real Madrid and Barcelona have had success with buyback clauses, bringing back players like Casemiro and Danny Carvajal after loan spells. But let's not forget that these success stories are the exception, not the rule. Most buyback clauses go unused, especially for clubs that don't have the same prestige as Real Madrid or Barcelona. Take Chelsea, for example. They have included buyback clauses in several transfers, but these clauses rarely result in simple transfers. The player's willingness to return and the financial implications make it complicated. Just look at Tammy Abraham, who could be brought back to Chelsea for a hefty fee, or Crystal Palace defender Mark Gahey, who would have to choose Chelsea over other potential suitors. So, what does this mean for Harry Kane's potential return to Tottenham? Well, even if he decides he wants to come back, it won't be because of any buyback clause in his contract with Bayern Munich. Players have free will, and Kane will be the one to choose his destination, not the clubs. Levy's comments suggest that negotiations would still need to take place with Bayern if Kane were to return. In other words, a standard transfer process would be required. So, the existence of a first option clause in his current deal is essentially irrelevant. In the end, the true value of a buyback clause lies in its ability to appease fans and create the possibility of a glorious reunion in the future. It's all about winning the press conference or, in this case, a fans forum. That's all for today, folks. What do you think about buyback clauses? Do you believe they have a significant impact on player transfers? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more football news. Stay tuned to Soccer News Center.